Stephanie, he's going to get his tax reform package for Christmas almost certainly. This bill should get through the House around 2 o'clock today. We may see as many as a dozen Republican House members from states like California and New York defect on this bill, but it won't be enough to stop it. Then it's just a question of timing for when this vote will happen in the Senate tonight. But again, Republicans feel confident they'll have the votes there. John McCain is out this week. He won't be back until January. And his fellow Arizonan, Jeff Flake, is the only Republican senator who has hasn't come right out and said how he's going to vote on this bill, but even in the unlikely universe in which Flake votes no, the rest of the Republican caucus is ready to push this bill through. So it's just a question, really, of timing at this point for when this bill gets to the president's desk. How about the American people? What pushback are you hearing in D.C.? Well, they're a lot less bullish on this, Stephanie. There's some new polling out from CNN. About 55 percent of Americans oppose this tax bill. Republicans are hoping that once people see some actual effect from this bill, that those numbers will start to change. On the individual side, that could take some time. People could change their withholdings in January, but regular folks might not start seeing more money in their paychecks for a while, which makes this sort of a politically perilous bet. Republicans will be able to say, yes, we passed this, but will it be popular? Will they have anything to show for it in terms of how it actually affects people by the time folks are ready to vote again uh, in the spring for primaries and November for next year? It's anybody's guess. All right. I want to point out while markets are up, corporations love this because it's great for their stock valuations. The rationale Republicans have in trickle down economics is cut corporate taxes. And those corporations are going to hire, spend more, uh, give people uh, wage increases. But if you actually look at bond yields, bond yields are not rising. So that would tell you that investors do not think this cut is going to lift the economy. John, I got to ask you, um, earlier today, I saw Kevin Brady on Morning Joe, and he was asked about carried interest because over and over, President Trump said it, Mnuchin said it, Gary Cohn said it. Carried interest will not stay in this system. It makes no sense. It's an absolute historic hookup. Uh, for people on Wall Street, specifically private equity, and I want to share what Kevin Brady said. No one back home says, hey, how's that carried interest provision going? They're asking, hey, can I keep more of my paycheck? We get the economy going. Can we get our jobs back from overseas? Oh, my only point to you is I just think those are the big issues families care about. That's all. You're damn right, John Harwood. Nobody back home is asking about carried interest because they have no idea what it is. But the big thing that people do care about is being treated fairly. So what do you make of that argument to say people don't care about that? They absolutely do care because by keeping carried interest in, it shows what well, we do have carve outs and side deals and hookups for the super rich. Well, Stephanie, those people in Kevin Brady's district could keep more of their paychecks if they got rid of carried interest, which is something that President Trump said he was going to do, which most uh, Wall Street people acknowledge is a, uh, is a loophole that should not exist. Uh, this is a way for private equity and hedge fund managers to uh, de define their income as non-wage income, but investment income, even though, in fact, it is uh, money in return for their services. But that's uh, one of the reasons why Democrats oppose this bill. You know, I talked to Mark Warner, the Democratic senator from Virginia. Uh, he says this is not sufficiently targeted to the working class. And he cites these economic forecasts that show that because it's missed time for the business cycle, it's going to increase the deficit and not do nearly enough to boost economic growth. Listen to Mark Warner. It will not only be not a boost, but I believe it's the single worst piece of legislation that I've seen since I've been in the Senate. And because it's been done in secret, I believe tax lawyers and accountants will spend a decade finding some of the loopholes and problems, particularly in the pass-through area and in some of the corporate tax reform. And obviously, Stephanie, to Garrett's point earlier, uh, Democratic opposition is not going to stop this bill, but it's relevant because if, in fact, Democrats have a big election in 2018, uh, 2020, if they get back in control, they're likely to go straight at these tax cuts and reverse them. 
It's important to point out, though, Mark Warner was talking about accountants and tax lawyers. President Trump has said in the past, I want to kill uh, tax repairs. We shouldn't need them anymore. But the fact that there are still so many loopholes, this is not reform. It's a tax cut. We've already heard from Republicans they, need it, they may need an ancillary bill to help fix this. Because it is still so complicated. Wait, what about those postcards, Stephanie? Hold on. I, I, let, I thought, we, let's not I, I get thought... sassy, though, for real. <laughs> Because all these complications still exist, that's only going to give more business to tax accountants. Yep. And, and as long as those accountants, as long as those structurers are employed, that will always benefit the super rich. Because the Joe Smith on the street is never going to be able to afford those people. Ooh, 100%. And, and, you know, they make the, the uh, postcard claim for lower earners uh, because if you don't have a lot of deductions, you take the standard deduction and it's very simple. Uh, but that's not where the money is. The money is in uh, working the system, uh, reclassifying your income as either investment income in the case of the carried interest uh, or as uh, business income in the case of the pass-through breaks. It's, it's going to be a festival for tax lawyers. All right, then a festival, a tax lawyer festival. That sounds like an awful party. Um, I just got to ask before we go. Because David Brooks pointed it out in his piece today, and he wrote, I'm appalled Republicans did not seek to balance the tax bill with an equal effect to help people who got the president elected. So think about, you're going to have the deficit jacked up $1.5 trillion. That is going to immediately impact social programs that have to get cut. Many of Trump's supporters are dependent on programs like Medicare. And even if we've heard, well, Medicare won't get hit, that would require a bipartisan, a bipartisan side deal. Does President Trump, do Republicans realize all the programs that help Trump's base that could get lost here? Yes, well, but I don't think they care particularly much. I'll let Garrett go from there. Yeah, no, uh, Mitch McConnell said yesterday they're going to come up with a fix on this, what they call those PAYGRO provision, to make sure that Medicare doesn't get cut right away because of the money they're spending in this tax bill. But Republicans have also said entitlement reform could be next on deck for next year. So we'll see if all of a sudden some of these same Republicans who were not particularly concerned about the deficit impacts of this bill decide that the deficit is something they need to address by going after some of these entitlement programs next year. Well, Stephanie, they, they say explicitly that tax cuts don't cause deficits, spending does. They see that as entirely different, and so they're going, going to go after Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security disability, and also uh, means-tested programs for the poor. There's no, there's no doubt about that. They've said that that's what, what they're going to do.